Good morning. Oops. Good morning. Uh, we're in Erie, Pennsylvania, and it's a very, very rainy day. So I thought instead I would uh, go over our, uh, how to set up uh, <clears throat> VR controllers and explain. So. Looks like everything's working. Let me check a couple of things. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, no reason to start the plane up. Seem a little bit jittery. I'm not sure why that's true. We have very overcast skies, and it's probably related to that, but I don't plan on spending a lot of time in the cockpit. We'll... Uh, We'll be going into the uh, into the hangar, into the settings menu, and uh, taking a look at that. Uh, so, last time I streamed, I went to I wanted to show off uh, Fly with Lua's uh, F mod implementation, and to my surprise, when I uh, <laughs> clicked on something, it didn't work. So, uh, this is uh, uh, with Fly with Lua the uh, the latest version that supports x 12. Uh, we now have uh, FMOD support. So I basically kind of wrote a script here for uh, to kind of show that off. So so we have a couple of things. Uh, makes it a little bigger here. I made it smaller, but maybe too small. Uh, so we have a button, a uh, bunch of buttons here. And uh, basically what these do are sounds that are already part of x -Plane. So if I click on the 10. 10. Oh. 20. Now if we click on the gear. The gear is really weird. This is a wave file, but, but in VR, it sounds like the gear is behind me. I don't understand how this is possible. But that's what it sounds like. When I click on this, it sounds like that. It is not... It's not right in front of me, it's behind me. It's kind of weird how it works. Uh, but one thing we can do is if I'm playing the sound, I can click stop. So the stop button will basically stop any of the uh, of the radio bus sound. So initially we have two different buses. We have uh, of the radio bus, radio channel, and the interior channel. So the flaps are on the inter interior channel. So if I click on that, so as soon as I click on that button, any interior sound that was playing will stop. By same token, if I'm playing this, I can make it louder. So I can adjust the volume. The other thing you can do is you can mute the sound. So if I mute it and try to play it, you don't hear anything. But if I turn the mute off, then you hear it. So, so all this is done <clears throat> using a Lua script, which I I find quite um, I, I think this is this is bigger than what I originally had thought, but um, well, we'll just have to see how it plays out. My thought is this could be as big a deal as what uh, adding uh, I am GUI support is to to uh, UI. Uh, as what what this will be to sound. So we'll just have to see. There are eight buses that are part of the FMOD system for x 12. And uh, what, uh, in the end, uh, <coughs> excuse me, in the end, I planned on supporting all of the buses uh, with uh, Fly with Lua. So from a Lua strip, you'll be able to have access to all of them. And uh, so... So that's kind of where we are on that. So let's uh, uh let's go in the hangar. So so.
So if I go up here to click on this, that'll take me to settings and joystick. Alrighty. So we'll go to my valve index and I'll uh, start off. So I'm using the valve index controllers. So uh, as you can see, that says valve index. Even though valve indexes are, uh, I have a left and a right. Uh, in X plane, it's, it doesn't show up as different. Uh, basically, it shows up as a valve index controller. There's, so you'll see that I have two of them. So, so we're on this one now. So you can see when I move my trigger. So people are having trouble, you know, not getting, can't get their uh, VR controllers to work. So. Uh, I thought, especially when we're uh, just starting with a brand new uh, uh, X-Plane 12, uh, we're going to have a lot of new people coming in here, uh, maybe new VR people. So, uh, so that's kind of what's important here. <clears throat> um, for your controllers to work right, there's a couple of these that are are mandatory. So you have to have them configured, or or explain uh, basically won't won't give you VR or your controllers won't be usable to you. So so what probably the most important thing is is to make sure this stuff is set up exactly as as this. So if uh, we go up here and uh, this is. Uh, uh, VR uh, touchpad X. So I ain't sure which one. Nope, this is X. So X is if I move it this way or this way. That's what X is. Y is like this or like that. Trigger is a trigger. So if you if you basically come in here and uh, and all this says none, these aren't going to work. So probably the first thing to do is basically click on this button here, reset to default for valve index controllers. And what that will do is it'll read a joy file. <clears throat> so uh, basically this is the valve index joy file. And uh, basically all this stuff in here uh it's basically what what it reads to basically set up all of this information so um so if we start it says display valve index controllers this display valve index controllers that's where that comes from so as we come down a little bit the uh, joystick uh access zero Joy use VR touchpad X. VR touchpad X. When we come down a little lower, it says Joy use VR touchpad Y. VR touchpad Y. So we come down a little bit further. All this doesn't make too much. And then these are buttons. So button two. And I think. Yeah, so so you notice here there's a big one here, but it's button zero. <laughs> big two here, it's button one. Uh, so uh, so the buttons coming out of uh, Steam are are start with zero, but these big numbers here in X-Plane they start with one. Just the way it is. So uh, so at least one of these buttons, these, when it says reserved, 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 reserved. These have to be at least on one controller. If it's not on one controller, same thing. Controller is not going to uh, uh, be usable to you. And uh, so if we look at button zero, if you look here, it says button zero sim, none, none. So basically that button there is available for, for, uh, for me to use. Now we go to button, button one. So if I go down here looking for one, button one, is a reserved menu. So the uh, the menu, in other words, uh, what, don't think it works here. Nope, 
Well, it does and it doesn't. Um, <clears throat> what the VR menu is, is the uh, flower that goes around your controller while you're in the cockpit, where you can make menu selections. On the valve index, this is unique to it. Basically, if I squeeze the valve index, so if I squeeze it, you can see that that is highlighted. VR menu button is highlighted. So that's if I squeeze it. So if I hit the upper button, basically the one that's got the bars across, if I hit that button, huh. well, that's kind of interesting. That's different than 11. <laughs> On 11, if I would hit this upper button, that would have highlighted, but it doesn't. I'm not so sure why, but that's okay. Um, some of the stuff I really haven't uh, looked at. <clears throat> so um, so that that's the button that gets the flower, and then we have trigger. So if I pull the trigger in just a little bit, a little bit, nothing, nothing, nothing. Now, when I pull the trigger all the way in, that highlights. So that's the trigger button. So if it, a little bit, 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 there, it highlighted. So it's about two thirds of the way up when that when that comes on. The last button is the one that's on the thumbstick. So if I push the thumbstick in, then that highlights. So that's what it says, VR thumbstick thumbpad button. So we'll say that that your your VR controller isn't working. How would you resolve that? So what you would do is before you before you get into VR, make sure you enable this guy here. So I'm going to enable it. So that's enable VR VR mouse cursor. So what that does is. I'm a mouse. <laughs> so what that does is allows, oh, where did you go? The VR mouse sometimes has a mind of its own. Sometimes you can't find it. There you are. Uh, yeah, sometimes it has a mind of its own. So, so since your VR controllers aren't working, it's kind of important to get them to work. So. What you have to do is use the mouse here to uh, to basically get these uh, get these settings set correctly. So so you would basically uh, go here and uh, scroll up and down until you find like what you need, where you see that, and then use the uh, the uh, left click on the uh, on the mouse to actually select it. So since I don't want to do that, I'm just going to go over here and just click on the uh, left button and uh, <clears throat> basically put the menu the uh, menu went the, that menu went away. So so if your controllers aren't working, more than likely this is all set to none, and uh, and you have to get it set pretty much like what this is to make that work correctly. Um, and the same thing is you can do the same thing. So over here, uh, go ahead and uh, click on like edit. So edit will allow you to, uh, uh, you can basically type in something, you know, to uh, search for, to uh, to get to the buttons that, that you uh, that you need. So same way I'm gonna click off here. Well, maybe. And uh, over here, cancel. Okay, I was looking for a cancel. <laughs> I don't want to change these. Uh, these are all correct. So, uh, <clears throat> but that basically is uh, how uh, how basically VR controllers uh, in X Plane work. Now, this this stuff here is. Uh, is the same whether you're work uh, using uh, like a Windows Next Reality, an Oculus, or a Steam VR uh, headset. They're all the same. 
if you're using SteamVR, which I am, then you have a couple of other uh, things that uh, you can uh, set. Uh, I have some uh, some personal profiles over on SteamVR, and I'll see if I can figure out how to get there. So I'm going to click on the uh, on this little little button you can't even see. I can just barely feel it. So did that work? Yes. So I'm going to go to. Uh, so you can see it now. Well, hopefully you guys can. Um, <clears throat> there's this little button down below the A, and believe that the uh, the trackpad there, and that's the button that I push. So I'm going to go to controller bindings, and uh, so this is an edit, or uh, this is X, uh, binding for X plane. So I'm going to edit this binding. And if you personal binding, okay, yes. So this says controller from Sparker in VR. Hey, that's me. So these are my bindings that I basically uh, <clears throat> created. And uh, what I did is on the on the Valve Index controller, I changed some things so that <clears throat> the um, this this uh, this trackpad, this guy here in the middle, I, I basically turned it off. Because it just it just got in the way when you would when I would try to use the thumbstick uh, every once in a while you would get that you see you see when I put my thumb on it but what I did was let me go down here a little bit button button trackpad so if you notice on the trackpad none 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 I basically turned it off I don't I don't use it whatsoever so so that was one thing I did the other thing I did was reverse the buttons. So, this A button, let me see. Mm, why'd you do that to me? Give me a second. Okay. For some reason, I, I just didn't like the way it was. I was trying to get out of this. So, but uh, what the other thing I've done is basically I've reversed. Let's see if I can see it. So I basically reversed my A and my B button. <clears throat> Originally, the A button would be kind of like my grip button. And, uh, and what I found is I wanted, I wanted the A button to be the easiest button to, uh, to get to. And, uh, and the B button is the same as the grip as a grip. So I could I could have it as the B button, which is a little bit out of the way. So I made the A button uh, the uh, button that you uh, basically it's the the button that is not uh, mapped to anything that's reserved on X plane. So I basically reversed the A and the B button, and uh, that's basically what I did with uh, with this um, whatever they call this. Personal bindings, okay. Uh, basically, that's kind of what uh, why I what I did and why I did it. So, so I'll go back to the game. <clears throat> so, so you can see that. So if I hold the controller and I'm pushing the uh, the bottom button. So if I push the bottom button, you see the top one goes in. So I basically reverse the functions of those. So that's interesting. I'll have to investigate this. But uh, so uh, we'll see how well this goes. I have to make this a little. Should I make this a little bigger? Hello, where'd you go? Hmm. 
Okay. So, <clears throat> this file here is, uh, so it's valve index uh, dash windows dot joy. So this is for the valve index controllers. And uh, basically this is a configuration for it. Now, this file over here, this is X-Plane joystick, uh, can't see it, space settings dot PRF. So where is it? So it's in output preferences. That's where this file is. So in a, in a joystick or VR controller, the information on how that works will be in here. So hold it back, rotate it, maybe. So down here where it says Joy Unique, so Joy Unique ID zero, so that says VR Valve Lighthouse. Uh, that is basically um, the information that Steam is giving X-Plane as to uh, what, uh, what a Valve Index controller is so there's a, a a zero and a one these next two are uh the one the one with the zeros that's my fulcrum one yoke and the next one down is my mfg crosswind pedals so so here you come down and uh so it just gives you some more information so whoops hello so we're going to go through quite a bit. So what I'm looking for, and it'll take me a little bit of time to get here. I'm looking for something that says uh, joy use. This is a monstrous file. Oh, and I don't think, I don't think I can use a, a search on this. So I'm just gonna have to play this game for a little bit here. <clears throat> I think FFB is actually, uh, uh, there's more. Oh, come on. Let's see if I can go this way. This may not go well. I'm trying to grab onto this slide bar. But it does not seemingly want me to do that. Can I do this? Yeah, I can. Okay. All right. You can tell this part wasn't rehearsed. But all of this information is in the uh, <clears throat> in this file. And it's basically how are your joystick devices are controlled. And there is a lot. You would have thought the use one would be closer to the top, but it's not. There we go. Okay. So. So, we have joy access, use zero. We have a 49, a 50, and a 51. Uh... Right now, off the top of my head, I can't remember which is which, but I believe I believe that 49 is the X, 50 is the Y, 
and the 51 is a trigger. I believe that's true. So basically for each joystick device, I think it's 25 access you have for each device. So, so we started at, we start at zero and we go to 24 and then at 25, we have another 49. Notice that's 49, 50, 51, same. And uh, so when we go down some more, we have at 50, so we have a two and a one. I believe two is roll and one is pick. That's what I believe. So that's my yoke. And uh, then if we go down to the next one, we have uh, a three, seven and a six. So it's 75, 76, 77. So three should be yaw. Seven should probably be left, uh, left break. And six should be right break. Could have them reversed, but, but that's basically how, how X-Plane knows. So in other words, if, if these were wrong, you could actually go in and actually put these numbers in and that would show up in here. You could actually do it that way. When um, when I was using Linux and X or uh, VR first come out on Linux, there wasn't any VR support. There still really really isn't. But but none of this stuff would get populated automatically. So so I would have to go in and actually manually put numbers in here to get this information populated. Took me a little while to figure all this out, but but because previous to that, I was a Linux user that uh, that was adding uh, joy files for Linux. I, I, I started to understand how all this works, and uh, it helped out tremendously. So, so that's kind of what this file is all about. So, um, it's just. Um, the thing about X-Plane is pretty much a lot, I, I just say a lot of their, uh, the information is stored in a, in a, basically a human readable text file. And uh, so, and if you know what you're doing, you know, you can, uh, you can make changes. So anywhere here you see a zero, that access is basically will show up here as none, you know? So, uh, yeah, I think there is one here. Yeah, so if I go, yeah, I'm gonna go one more. So, so you have 49, 50, 51. So that's Y, X, Y, trigger, and then this axis three, it's none. So that is what the, uh, the zero here, that's basically what that is. That that will say none because it's zero is none. It's nothing. So okay. <clears throat> All righty. Yeah, since it was raining, I thought I'd uh, take some time and do this. I'm not sure uh, how well this is going to come off. If it doesn't come off too well, I'll probably try to do this in 2D. But it's kind of hard uh, because I can't I can't get here in 2D, and uh, I can kind of pick up bring up the screens. But I tried to make them make them big enough that it's kind of readable. You know whether whether I've actually succeeded or not, I'll have to watch the VOD to tell. But uh, uh, but that was kind of what my goal was, is to, uh, because I, I've been watching on the forums of people struggling with uh, getting their uh, VR controllers working, you know, and and uh, and that kind of stuff. So I thought I would take the time to uh, kind of go over and explain, uh, like, uh, how all this stuff works and... Uh, um, just as an informative video, so so as long as this one don't look too bad, I'll probably take it and uh, highlight it and uh, and basically end up putting it on uh, on YouTube. So 
Uh, I had planned on uh, streaming uh, flying today, but the weather's just atrocious and uh, just a lot of rain. And I like to fly in real weather. And I had some uh, support, um, some support issues from my uh, my uh, plugins that I had to get resolved, and uh, those are resolved, uh, exception of one. My X checklist plugin, I still have to uh, get that to support ARM. And uh, I'll probably do that after I'm done here and uh, see where we're going. So, okie dokie. I think I'm, I think I've covered what I wanted to cover. I think so. Yeah. Yep. I think that's it. So, and, and that's what I'm, I'm finding is there's some subtle there's some subtle things that are a bit different in 12 as opposed to 11 as and um they're, but they're but they're subtle uh and uh so when i find some i'm trying to make sure that it's not really a bug it's just it's different the uh the new version is just different how they do things so but um uh, okay um so yeah just to to reiterate um, if your joystick controllers aren't working, like say, I think I heard somebody that says, uh, like the trigger button doesn't work. Um, and more than likely, at least on one of your controllers, one of these has to say VR trigger. Uh, if it doesn't, and the other thing it has to say, it has to be two things actually. So VR trigger has to be here. That's an access. So that's the button, that's the trigger button, or the trigger, that's its button, but it's an access. So it's an access, but also for for the trigger to actually do something, that has to be set too. So button three here has to, it has to be set for VR select trigger button. So that, when I go far enough, that highlights. So when I go, when I go here, so if the trigger button didn't work, I could pull it in, and first of all, you wouldn't see you wouldn't see that line. But also, when I go to move it, it wouldn't move it. It would it may highlight it because it's close, but when you pull the trigger button in, it's not it's not gonna it won't allow you to move this. So same way as over here. So if I don't have the trigger down, I can move this all I want. It's not going to move. I have to hold it with the trigger, and you can hear it. So you can hear that actually click. And uh, but but if the but if back in settings, but if this is not set, that's not going to work. And most of the people that are having trouble with their uh, with their VR controllers not working in menu and that kind of stuff, that's what the problem is. It's that there's something isn't isn't right. Now on my Valve Index controllers, if I squeeze them, this menu shows up. Squeeze them again, it goes away. Now, if I click on the upper button. That also will bring up the menu. So if I squeeze it, it can go away. And I just find it more uh, convenient to use the squeeze as opposed to the upper button because you got to reach up over the, the lower button. So so when I squeeze it, that shows up. And the same way is if the, um, if in your settings, if the X if the X and Y access for the thumbstick is not set up, then you won't be able to do this. You won't be able to highlight that menu selection. So, so when I move it over, it allow it allows me to uh, um, hello. So it allows me to make a selection. So. So in this case, I'm going to highlight get in pilot seat, look straight forward, pull the trigger. And when I do that, 
I wonder why that happened. Who knows? All of a sudden, the texture got really small. So I assumed something happened on the desktop. <laughs> Oh, well. Let's get these out of the way. Uh, so, so that's that's important for that that all for for the VR controllers to work correctly. Uh, that's what uh, <laughs> I'm getting rid of you. I don't like the VR mount at all. I find it annoying. Okay, that's all. So we'll go back here. I was watching that cursor thing go moving around and stuff. But like right here, so if I click on the uh, click on it and pull the trigger in, then I can move it. I got to report this. I, I seen this in a stream, and uh, it's not this way on 11. For some reason, this, bot, this second instrument here, I can feel it. Uh, I can feel it kind of jittering, but it's not moving it. It's like this OBS button doesn't work. It does on this one. Not on this one. Come on, really? But it's also like, uh, and this hasn't been fixed yet. Let me check. Is this a bug I've reported? I reported a long time ago. So... Oh, they fixed it. This used to not highlight. So when I would come here, this one would have worked, but this one did not. <laughs> so, but I see they fixed it. So the button, it would actually work, but the, uh, cause this is, uh, so it flips between, uh, between com and uh, nav. So the highlight goes up and down. So that part would work, but the highlight part didn't. So when you went close to it, it didn't highlight in the middle like it does right now. So they fixed that. But I've got to report this one. This one's not working. Need to file a bug report on that. Uh, pretty much everything else I think is working. I just find that weird. In 2D, it doesn't sound that way. But in VR, it sounds like it's behind you. I don't know how they did that. That's just bizarre. All right, I think. Let me shut this back off. So we don't drain the battery. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, when it gets really overcast like this, uh, not only do the frames tank, but I mean, a kind of, uh, it isn't as good an experience, I guess would be the right way to put it. It's kind of like scattered, it's not bad, but, uh, but overcast like this, like, well, I mean, what do we got? Uh, so, one, one, two, zero. No, it looks like they fixed that, too. That was pretty slow. That's way better. Huh. Hmm. Maybe I didn't remember the aid. International oh. Field okay. Information. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Zulu arriving. Runway zero six. Departing runway zero six. Weather. Wind three four zero degrees at nine or knots. Visibility seven miles. Sky conditions broken at one thousand three hundred. Broken at one thousand eight hundred. Overcast at four thousand. Temperature eighteen. Dew point sixteen. Altimeter three zero zero seven. Advise on initial contact, you have information, Yankee. So, so we have overcast <clears throat> at like around 1,500 feet. <clears throat> Another overcast layer at, I think it was 1,800 feet. 
So what does overcast mean? Overcast means the majority of the sky has clouds on it. Um, and, uh, and that's what we see. <laughs> There's clouds everywhere. And, uh, and that has, uh, that has an impact over, uh, what was the wind? That's slow. Well, that don't quite seem right. Oh. I messed up. Some other frequency got changed. That should be better. Still slow. One two zero three five zero. That's what it should be. Erie International Tom Bridge Field. Wow. Yankee sixteen thirty Zulu arriving runway zero six departing runway zero six weather wind three four zero degrees at nine or knots visibility seven miles sky conditions broken at one thousand three hundred broken at one thousand eight. So. The winds are from 340 at 9 knots. So, where are you? Where'd you go? I got something a little crazy going on in VR. So, no, three four zero. So I don't have my cockpit with me to kinda kinda judge, but you see this tree blowing over here? That tree, that tree, that tree. So it's blowing it's leaning to the left. So let's go look at a windsock. And see if the windsock looks the same. Where'd the windsock go? There it is. Huh. Pretty close to the same, isn't it? Well, the tree's blowing over. It was blowing over to the left. When I come over here, the wind is from 340. So it's blowing into that windsock. Now, windsock's pointing the same direction as the tree is. So you can use trees as a reference as to um, what direction the wind's going on. Now, the tree may be bending a little bit excessive when you look at the, uh, the calibration of this windsock here. I forgot what they are. They're three knots a piece or something like that. So, so the more straighters, the more straighters you have, the uh, the more, the more wind it is. So if it's nine knots, I would have thought that I would have seen at least two, at least two of them straight. So. Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Are there things that need to be fixed? Absolutely. Um, I was fortunate enough to be, uh, to be one of the, uh, one of the alpha testers. So, so I got to see it from fairly broken to to where we are today, and uh, improvements are huge. And um, 
But the one thing I know for sure is that if you find something wrong, and I just found something wrong in the cockpit, um, and uh, you file a bug report, if, if they can replicate that, that bug report, they will email you back with a bug number. Doesn't matter who you are. It isn't like you have to be a developer. You have to have some standing with, uh, with Laminar Research. No, no. You can just be any user. If, if you can give them a good enough bug report that they can replicate it. In other words, can you constantly replicate this bug? Then you'll get a bug number. And when that bug is resolved, it will be in the release notes as resolved. So if you look at um, the release notes of Alpha 38, look at the number of bugs that were resolved in that release. Uh, that, that's what will happen going forward now with, with, the, uh, with, the public, uh, with the public access and the betas. So that's what's going to happen is um, they will uh, fix bugs, fix bugs, fix bugs, and then they'll have a new uh, a new uh, public a new a new beta beta one beta we're beta one now we'll be beta two, and uh, but that's that's how Laminar Research does business, and uh, and it is uh, I find it refreshing, you know that you can. Uh, you can get that kind of feedback from the developers, and uh, so, so yes, yeah, I'm 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 completely happy with what they did. Uh, I'm a VR user, so there are things that I'm actually experiencing right now uh, that are um, are crazy. So, in other words, in VR right now, and it is because of this, because of all the overcast. The overcast has some kind of influence over how the the VR image is being rendered. So I'm actually seeing like kind of some shadows uh, in my in my headset, uh, but it is it is related to the overcast. I don't know what it is, and uh, I uh, I have reported it, and I think I'll put in an, a, another bug report. The uh, it's way easier if you're actually streaming something, and I'm sure that uh, in the stream that it's showing that there's a darkness. When, I, when I'm looking down, you can see like a darkness uh, to, the, uh, to where the ground is. And then as I move my head, that darkness, that darkness or that shadow kind of follows. It's way easier if you can just say, hey, go to, uh, go to Time Mark X and uh, look at this uh, video. And uh, this is what I'm seeing you know, when you file your bug report. So it makes it a little bit easier uh, now that we're allowed to uh, stream. Oh, no doubt. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. If uh, uh, you'll be, hopefully you'll be happy. I've been using X-Plane since X-Plane 9. I am also uh, a plugin developer, so I, uh, the plugins that I have uh, that are mine is uh, X SATIC panel. So the uh, the SATIC panel support uh, that's my plugin. X checklist is a is a is a checklist that I am a I am a co-author of, um, and I am also the head of development of Fly with Lua. So uh, so I have like uh, I have a few more plugins, you know, but those are the predominant ones. Um, but, um, so, so do I have a vested interest? Absolutely. And I've been using x for quite a while. I also use, I also have Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, and, um, uh, and visually, Microsoft Flight Simulator looks really good. But there are things about it as a VR user that, that have been broken pretty much since they added VR controller support, they're broken. And and I filed bug reports and got no response. And it's just disappointing. It's like, okay, if if I if I take the time to write a bug report and get no response, it's kinda like, okay, well, 
why would I continue to use a sim if it's broken for how I use a use a, uh, a flight simulator? It's just my personal opinion, uh, and I'm certainly allowed to have it. Um, and I can uh, I think I'm going to go in the cockpit and kind of demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about. So, so other cool thing, this is what you can do in X-Plane. Let's go roam around the airport. Okay. So let's kind of look at this stuff. So look at the uh, look at the uh, cracks in this in this runway, and notice they don't repeat. They don't repeat at all. So they're somehow somehow randomized. Who knows how they did this? But this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. And uh, so, but but this is called teleporting. So basically, on your controller, and uh, what this this uh, red thing is, that's direction. So if I want to go back that way, that'd take me back the back direction. Yep. Nope. Exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's it's just sad. I mean, it, it's absolutely sad, you know, but it is what it is. And um, uh, I'm uh, I'm happy with my decision. So so we're going to jump back in the cockpit. So, so all I have to do here is just say, get back in pilot seat. Boom, I'm back in the pilot seat. So I was clear over there by the runway, and now I'm back in the pilot seat. And all I had to do is select the menu selection, and this, uh, let me jump out to show. So if I go over here, you see this blue uh, circle? That's basically where this hot spot is. So that's basically, and you notice the reds to the front, that's how you're going to be pointed. There's going to be one back here and one over, and you actually see the circles? Let me go to the front. They're around there. They're around there. So you see the blue circles? That's where your head is. So these, these, uh, these blue circles, that's, that's your head position. So you notice uh, the one on this side too close. The one on this side is lower because I've actually adjusted my position with a, with a tool called VR Tools. I've adjusted my position so I'm a little bit lower in the cockpit. And, uh, <laughs> and I, popped into the, I popped into the other one. So I look straight ahead, pull the trigger. And um, so the default position was I was higher. And uh, the correct position, let me look a minute. Oh, so that's better. Uh, so the correct position is in uh, Cessna is if I look like this, I want to be able to look out underneath the wing. Uh, the default position was higher than that. So if I looked, I'd be kind of looking into the wing. So, so I've adjusted that. Griffy, thank you so much for the follow. It's really appreciated. Thank you. Um, so, let's uh, start this airplane and kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about. So, we'll turn the beacon light on. We'll turn some uh, some power on. We'll get the uh, mixture in. Get this guy rolling over. Should be good. Turn the avionics on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. South. Pretty close. Okay. Uh, example. If if I want to like, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take the uh, throttle up to a thousand. So. I some I sometimes I must get like a double. Uh, a double notification because I hear the ring twice. So for a follow, but thank you for the follow. Um, so if I want to like increase the RPM by a hundred, I just go ahead and highlight it and uh, push the trigger in, push the controller in, and uh, so that that's a hundred. If I try to do the same thing with the VR controller in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It would go three or four hundred RPM. It it jumps. So so as you move it, 
it doesn't move, doesn't move, doesn't move, and all of a sudden it moves, but but it, it but it it moves by maybe 10 percent or 20 percent. It's just kind of crazy. So the trim wheel is the same way. Here, I mean, if I if see, hopefully you can see it. There's a nub right there. So I'm gonna pull the trigger. And you you see when I grab it, it moves. It's 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 right tight to my controller. So I can move that nub down to the bottom. So I basically just like you do in a real airplane, you basically grab one of the nubs and you move it. So it allows you to do very precise trim adjustments. When I fly in VR, you can see I have this uh, yoke here. This is a Fulcrum 1 yoke, and I have MFG crosswind pedals. Uh, and I have no other hardware. The only other interaction is these guys. So I have two, uh, two VR controllers on my hands that allow me to uh, run the flaps down, adjust the mixture, throttle, trim wheel, parking brake, all the switches. Uh, so all my interaction is done with VR controllers. So I don't have any other hardware that, that basically I use that. You missed everything. <laughs> Hi, Downwind, how are you doing? Um, I did a, the beginning of the stream, basically what it was is just going over how how VR controllers work in X-Plane, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it was it was raining. I says, um, let me just do an informative, an informative stream, and uh, just just show off. So so that's what I that's what I did earlier in it. It's just showing how the uh, how the VR controllers work in X-Plane, and if if you have a VR controller that is not working, how you would go about fixing it. And uh, that's kind of what I did earlier. So, but uh, so, as far as you're concerned, you didn't miss anything. <laughs> you you know all that stuff. <laughs> so, but um, so yeah. So that's kind of the, the it's it's a very big difference, and it's how I particularly choose to fly in VR. Uh, this is how I choose to do it. Other people do it differently. Other people have physical controls and all that stuff. I have two, just a yoke and uh, yoke and pedals. And uh, the other, I um, um, all other is with a VR controller. So, uh, Downwind, what do you think of the uh, the other VOD? It was a bit long, <laughs> but it was kind of fun. It was kind of fun. The one thing I'm noticing is uh, with, uh, I mean, I'm gonna pop out of the plane. <laughs> Stay away from the prop. So, so what's going on right now is, because there's an overcast layer, there's kind of like a shadow in front of me. And I'm not sure if that actually, and the shadow is kind of attached to my headset. So as I move my head back and forth, the shadow kind of shows here. That, uh, and I think I, have done recordings uh, earlier in the uh, development and I seen exactly the same thing it's related to the overcast of the uh, of clouds so if I do this so I'm gonna go customize whoops I don't even need to do that that's gone that's gone there is something going on with the rendering in VR and what's being displayed in uh, on on with an over with a a, a a very big overcast layer and what's being rendered in the VR headset. No, I have not. It's uh yeah. <laughs> I'm 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 like a GA pilot. I probably I it's it's way it's way powerful. So yeah. Uh, so 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 I can. Uh, oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. 
I mean, I will, I will take it out, no doubt about it. It's in the sim, why not? So, but uh, so if I go ahead and I change the clouds to uh, to even, let's get myself some clouds. So we'll do few. Actually, we'll do scattered. We'll do scattered. We'll even bring them. We'll even bring them down a bit. Let's bring them down here. So. Yep. Get uh, even here. I'm seeing. I'm seeing that. That's where I'm running at. I was told that this 16 could be some of my problem, that I could lower it, but I'm, I haven't tried that yet. Because you can't, when you adjust this, you have to restart the sim. <laughs> and, I, and I always kind of think about it after I'm already streaming, so. But that's kind of where we are. So Max Max Ultra, I have this off. And uh, two MSA, 16. Ambient occlusion. Help me out. <laughs> uh, this guy? But uh, that's kind of like where I am. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I have that up on Ultra. You know, I would, I, I thought it would be better. Turn that off. Oh, you mean like, like there? So I've seen better. So I've seen better. So do you understand what that's doing? Yeah, I'm I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of shadows. Um seems like shadows and VR don't get along, but I'm that may just be my opinion. So so let me go back to uh real weather. Yeah, yeah, that makes a difference. Wow, okay, thank you, thank you. I mean, I always thought if you run the sliders like that kind of stuff all the way to the right, that's better, but um, evidently not. Interesting, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'll do that, I'll absolutely do that, so. So, so it's an artifact caused by by doing that. Oh, okay, okay. Well, interesting. So what happens if I give it ambient occlusion quality? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, I'll put up with no shadows for not having that. Especially on days, you know, that it's like it is. Interesting. Very interesting. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oops. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I'll, I'll play around with that. I mean, you know, that's kind of what this is all about. Trying to find something that you're happy with, so. Yeah, 
They do sound pretty good. Have you tried the Aedis? Oh, in VR, in VR, that's, uh, <laughs> I find it challenging. Uh, let's, let's, let's bring that up. That's kind of, so, let me find it. Windows. Yeah. So. Erie International Tom Ridge Field Tower, November 172 Sierra Papa. Radio check. Erie International Tom Ridge Field Ground. Two Sierra Papa. Departing four circuits. Two Sierra Papa. Runway zero six. Taxi by a dawn. Alpha and Fox Drive. Hold short of runway zero six. Runway zero six. Taxi by a dawn. Alpha and Fox Drive. Hold short of runway zero six. Two Sierra Papa. Yeah. So. So this is blank down here. <laughs> and the only way it lights up is if you put your, your wand on here. But if it's gone, it's gone. In 2D, this is not true. I, I'm not sure why we have to do this in VR. Doesn't make any sense to me, but, but that's how it is. And the same way as um, if you're like doing like a circuit, and it's way too, way too low ceiling for me to do a circuit. But if you're doing a circuit and say you're, you're doing them, then normally your downwind, your downwind call is kind of late. So in other words, um, so you take off, you turn on your crosswind, and you turn on your downwind, and it's quite a ways, sometimes actually the first circuit, the downwind never, you never even get to call downwind. Because it, because it isn't like it's displayed all the time. It's like, oh, when, when, when ATC thinks it's, uh, it's okay to call downwind, then it will, then it will, uh, it, this will show up. It's kind of like, no, no, I, I should, I should be able to call it whenever I want. Same way as calling a uh, turn and final. So, so you're on your downwind and you called it and, uh, so you turn on base. I would think that when I'm on base, that I should be able to um, call call final. Uh, but no, sometimes it's after you've already turned on final, and sometimes on really short final, that you finally get the option to say call final. <laughs> it's like no, it should it, it should be there all the time. So yeah, yeah, test it out. Um, I. Uh, I use Pilot to ATC. <laughs> that's that's what I'm using right now. Um, I think it I think it has the possibility to be pretty nice, but but there's a couple of um, just usability things that are uh, just not um, not optimal at all, especially for a VR user, because I actually tried it in 2D, and uh, and actually it, it 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 seemed pretty good, you know. I mean, but but in VR it's kind of I'm, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what the reason is. I, I, I've got to understand this. Why would you think it's a good idea to hide information that you um, you have to interact with? I, I'm 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 missing I'm missing the rationale. That's I guess would be the right way to put it. I'm just missing that rationale. So, and the other thing is, if you get too much stuff here, then you'll get one of these sliders. So think about your NVR. So you got to highlight it first, and then uh, a, a good a, a example is I was doing circuits in NVR, 
and I wanted to quit. So, so there, there's one of these items, it's not shown right now, uh, is uh, VFR landing. And, uh, but, but when I highlight it, it's not listed here. There's a scroll bar over here that you have to scroll down to find it. And it's kind of, I'm, think, I'm kind of thinking that I'm in, I'm doing circuits. So letting, letting HTC know that I want to quit circuits should probably be kind of high on the list. <laughs> and, and it wasn't, it was, it was down quite a way. So, so. but I, I personally think this could be really nice, um, you know, but, but, but it has to be from, from a VR user, it has to be much more usable than it is currently. So, and, I, and I'm just trying to also just trying to understand uh, why why it's a good idea. You've got this whole window displayed. Why uh, why does it have to be hidden? I don't I don't I'm just not I'm missing that part. There may be a very good reason, but I don't know. Uh, since you weren't here earlier. When I did my first stream, uh, you may have noticed that this did not work. <laughs> so this is uh, Fly with Lua. So and this is an IM GUI uh, FMOD demo. So if I click on here. Ten. So here's, here's a cool one. So this is gear. Because this is FMOD in VR, it almost sounds like the gears behind me. It's a little bizarre, and I haven't done nothing. All I'm doing is playing this wave file, but it sounds like it's behind me, and that is from the. Uh, so I'm using the radio, the radio channel. It's what I'm using. So when we uh, play it, I can change the volume. So I can make it louder or quieter. I can mute it. But uh, so the flaps are I have on interior. So. In the same way, I can uh, stop. So I can stop any of the um, any of the sounds that are on any of the sounds from Flywood Lua that are on the uh, interior. I can stop them. So. Uh, what do you mean by that? The buses are kind of related to where you are, it, my understanding. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is, uh, so the, the, uh, the newest version of Flywood Lua is 2.8.0. And, uh, this demo script is part of the, uh, the lowest scripts that are in the uh, the disabled uh, uh, folder. This is a. Uh, it says it says exactly this. It says I am GUI FMOD demo. So you can kind of look at how I'm doing it and uh, kind of make your own. Yeah, yeah. It was it was important to me uh, to uh, to figure out. I started I started in February trying to get FMOD to work with Fly with Lua. And uh, I failed miserably. Um, Carmela, I think is her name, Buckman, I believe. Um, she uh, she wrote a like a, 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 a an FMOD uh, demo program, uh, maybe three weeks ago now, and uh, she's a developer too. And. Uh, Well, hello, the original, the original Big Mac. I think that's right. Uh, welcome to my stream. Uh, but uh, but she wrote like a demo program. It took us from the time she uh, she got it on a public uh, an act, a, a website. Um, it was on Bitbucket, I think. Um, took us about a week to iron the bugs out and get it all working took us the longest time to get uh, it to work on windows but uh, but we got it working on windows and uh so from that i used as a, a starting point to add that to uh to to fly with lua i originally put it on the base program the fly with lua.cpp 
And, uh, and I didn't like it there at all. I wanted it separate. So I created uh, uh, another uh, uh, FMOD, or uh, I think I called it FMOD Immigration, is what I called it, uh, .cpp. And uh, I put it there, got everything shoved over to there and working again. And I had a building, uh, it's building multi-platform. So uh, I'm pretty happy. So, uh, so basically how I look at it is um, there's no reason right now to use OpenAL for uh, for for any kind of sounds and stuff. That mod works great. So, uh, Flywood Lua originally is being released uh, is um, supports two of the buses. There's eight total, and uh, so I plan on uh, I plan on supporting all of them. There are two that are broken. Um, they 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 evidently work from the. Uh, from the uh, FMOD studio, but they don't work from the core, which is what we're using for uh, for um, for uh, for Fly with Lua. So there's a couple of them that are broken. Bug reports are in. Uh, how to build it, all that stuff is already. It's with Laminar, so uh, so I'm sure they'll get it fixed. So just have to wait a little bit. That's all. But uh, but it, it 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 seems pretty nice. I mean, I kind of like the way it is. I like the controllability and stuff. It's quite a bit different than OpenAL, um, but uh, but it absolutely seems to work okay. So I have no idea what was going on the first uh, when I streamed this uh, first. Uh, I tried it and it didn't work at all. I was like so disappointed. I was like, <laughs> you know, and, and it, it's something I didn't try. I didn't try it in VR, not at all. I just tried it in 2D and uh, assumed it would work in VR. Uh, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> All right, so yeah, a couple of yeah, no problem, no problem. Uh, trying to think, you need any any other questions answered? Because as bad as it is, I'm I just uh, am not gonna fly today. So, okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, just just not gonna fly. But uh, what I did want to show is uh, so so due to the fact I got ATC ATC clearance, then it uh, <laughs> that thing keeps moving on me. So it puts this yellow ribbon, you know, out to wherever the uh, uh, wherever uh, you're supposed to. Uh, supposed to taxi to so but I can actually do that I'll do that uh, I got taxi light on okay so the ribbon the ribbon kind of moves around a little bit while you're moving here so something that's a little weird not sure why this is true for some reason normally you would um, I got to get to where it is so normally you would go out that taxiway and go to the end of the runway but for some reason I want you to go here I'm not sure why that is in Pilots Way to see it tells you contact Erie International Tom Ridgefield Tower one one eight point one zero. Contact Erie International Tom Ridgefield Tower one one eight point one zero two Sierra Pop. So it told you to contact the tower. Of course it's hidden. And I think I gotta change it. Yeah, I gotta change it over here. So this is all like not as intuitive as it could be and I'm just gonna want to see how long it takes for it to disappear yep. so 
that was about 15 or 20 seconds for it to disappear. And I think I'm gonna do this. Erie International Tom Ridge Field Tower, 2 Sierra Hop, taxiing 2 Air North Pack Coast Golf Alpha 1. Erie International Tom Ridge Field Tower, November 172 Sierra Hop, holding short of runway.